I was born in Vicarage Lane in 1934, and I remember things very vividly from 1939 onwards. Uh, the village was very much smaller in those days, had a small population, and none of the inbuilt dwellings had been built. So the vast areas which are now housing estates weren't. Lots of poultry farms, uh, really a fairly rural community. Most roads had open fields down one side. There were no houses up uh, Langley Hill on the, on the left-hand side. There was not very much in Vicarage Lane. We had a big rookery at the top of Vicarage Lane. Uh, things have changed immensely. The May Day celebrations were started after the war again. I think Jean Whitelaw was the first May Queen, and they ran on until quite a few years. Uh, they were held on the common or in the, pri the grounds of the Priory. Um, it was always a fancy dress competition. I had the pleasure of entering that and winning it for a couple of years running. Spent many happy years growing up on this common. The sledging track used to start just to the left of where the sight screen is over there. And you better sledge non-stop down the sledging track, coming out of the bottom, down to Common Lane, and out by the fire station. You, you could sledge without stopping the car. On the lower part of the common here, there were little, little oaks. A selection, they're now big oaks, but a selection of about 12 trees. And the test of skill was if you climbed up one tree, you could go all around the 12, without actually touching the ground. Um, we used to play kick can a lot on the common. Uh, you'd have someone guarding a hat or something, and you'd try and creep up on it. The pavilion was an old wooden pavilion where the present pavilion stands. The, the nets were over here on the left, and they used to carry the, the netting and the, the coconut matting across the common before every practice. The rookery was, the elm trees were all up on the left over there. Uh, it was all different. Once a year we had the King's Landing Carnival and, and the fete and the fair. And the scout would put a couple of bell tents up and they would keep guard of all the stalls and what have you on the common. So we provided quite a useful service. It was a statty fair. So the fair people had the right of coming on the common once a year. And when they were not able to come, they would come and put just the children's roundabout on the common to preserve their, their right, which goes back to Henry VIII's day. But in the old days, there were, it was a real proper fair. There was a boxing booth, um, dodgems, and, and affordable things as well. The, the rides were affordable. It was quite, quite an event in the village. This was the church house when I was a boy and all the village activities took place in the church house. It was used by the school a lot. Um, it was used as a concert hall for the Operatic Society and for the King's Lonely Players. The Operatic Society put on a show, The Gondoliers, I think in about 1947-48 and it, it, it all operated quite smoothly until the King's Lonely Players wanted to put on Blythe Spirit. The vicar of the day, the Reverend Rex Parkin, objected. He thought that was not in accordance with church teachings and he banned it. And the, the backlash from that was that the, a society was formed to build the community centre in that. The church sold it, I think, in the late 50s, early 60s, and it became an office block. But prior to that, it was a malting house. The village school that coped with the entire education of the village is over on my left. Um, it was a bit, uh, property with a large school playground here with the, for the boys. Then there was a big building, and then there were th three wooden temporary buildings going down there with the girls' playground. And at the bottom of that, there was a school canteen. And there was a large corrugated iron building called Caxton Hall, 
where the scholarship class got sent to when Mr Pentley turned up at the school. So the whole, this entire area was the Church of England school and it coped with all pupils from about the age of seven to 14 and after the 1944 Education Act to 15. But most people in the village went to school there. We played in the, in the playground with, the, with tennis balls, playing football, and whenever the ball went up on the roof, someone was trying to shin up the drain pipe and retrieve it. So I shinned up the drain pipe there. A lady called Mrs. Mrs. Walsh, known very affectionately as Fatty, because she was a large lady, she was walking down Church Lane and saw me, reported me to the head teacher, and I got the cane as a result of going up there. But uh, that goes back a few years. <laughs> I saw the vicar of the day, he shot out of standard six because one of the pupils was misbehaving and chased him with flowing robes and a cane across this footpath here. The boy outstripped the vicar but um, he was going to cane him for being insolent or misbehaving. And the infant school was over there where Meadowbank is. And it was a big red brick school with about three classrooms and a head teacher's office with playground uh, area for playing around all around and they built Aberfield, Garrett House and, and uh, Friars Mead in, in the grounds of it. So in 1939 I was at school here and war started and we started having air raid, air raids and air raid warnings and men were stationed on the roof of the Ovaltine which is over there and the, the, the fire alarms would go off and we would all be sent under our desk. We, we used to go to school with, with gas masks in those days. We were all issued with a gas mask, but I, don't, I can't recall ever using it seriously. But we used to have gas mask drills in the playground. So I can remember the, the air raid warnings very clearly. I can remember the doodle bugs that used to come over. You'd be playing in the playground or on a walk and the doodle bug would come overhead and the engine would cut out and that was the thing when they start plummeting to the ground. Except they, they landed and exploded a long, a long way from where the, the engine cut out. I can remember on two occasions being directly under a, a doodle bug when the engine stopped and they came down in, one came down in Tring I think. We're standing on the site of the entrance to Tooby's Mill, which was very active in my day. And right opposite was a large public house called the King William. The landlord, I think, took the Christmas club money and couldn't face the consequences. So he drank paraquet, which was an awful way of committing suicide. But the King William, then the landlord wasn't replaced and he eventually fell into disrepair. There were a lot of pubs in King's Langley in the old days. It was Benskin's territory. So apart from the King William here, we'd got the red lion down there on the left-hand side. Then he went over, round the corner to the left and over the canal bridge. On the left-hand side of the canal bridge was the Griffin, which was the one that was bombed during the war and demolished. And the landlord and his dog were killed. And on the other side of the, of the canal bridge, there was the boatman um, and, and a large bakehouse and, and shop. Uh, the land was further round opposite the housing development. So you've got the boatman, the griffin, the lamb, the red lion and the King William all within a few hundred yards of each other. And I think they're, they're all active as well. We're now in the grounds of a house that used to be called the Whitlers, which is occupied by a single man who got staff, he got a chef with a... I think there was a housekeeper. I was the boy working for the fishmongers. He used to deliver fish to the back door. I worked for Ron Coleman who had Kingsland Fisheries. He had premises in Primrose Hill. He then moved from Primrose Hill to the bottom of Vicarage Lane where he had Kingsland Fisheries there. And that's where I became his boy. And I learnt to fillet fish. Uh, I learnt to draw chickens. He taught me quite a lot of things. And I was errand boy. So um, I had fairly close connections with the fish shop. The other place where you bought food was where, where Taylor's Tools now are. There was the large co-op 
with on the right hand side a butcher shop and on the left hand side a grocery shop. And there was another grocery shop the other end of the village and we had a shoe repairer and we had a watch repairer. It was quite different than it is now. I think we're standing in a large area of land that the Fisher family, who lived in Little Hayes, gave to the village. So the land the community centre is built on was given entirely by the Fisher family. Um, and they used to have concert parties in their back garden, which had been over there. So they must own a fairly considerable amount of land. Uh, Mrs Fisher was the daughter of the Reverend Haythorn Thwaite, who is vicar of Kings Langley, and I think they were fairly well to do. This is a tributary, it's a river gade, and there used to be a lot of skill. That willow tree was much smaller in the old days, and we used to try and cross there. We used to fish in here. I can remember, I remember my brother falling in the, in the river gade. This iron pipe going over the canal bridge, there's always a challenge to all the schoolboys in the village who straddle that pipe on the right hand side and go across the canal on the pipe rather than on the bridge. If you were born the top side of the high street, you grew up playing on the common. If you grew up at this end of Kings Langley, this would be a familiar playground. And certainly I've been up on the railway tracks here and put pennies on the line for trains to squash as they came through. And my parents were very unhappy and warned me off, but that was a very dangerous pastime. I can't recall any fatalities as a result of it. When we were children, none of these railings were there. And there were no electric lines either. It was all st steam. <clears throat> so Sundays were very austere. You weren't allowed to do anything on a Sunday. You used to go for family walks only. We would walk along the canal to Apsey and back or over Tidy Hills or to Chipperfield and back. But it was merely walking about on a Sunday. You weren't particularly allowed to run about either. I, I, I used to play table tennis for the Methodist Northwest London League. And I met a girl playing table tennis and dated her for a, for some, and I believe we went to the cinema on a Sunday and I felt distinctly uncomfortable about it. Everyone went to the pictures. You queued to get in the cinema. You queued for the different seats that you, you, you wanted to sit in. You had cheap seats, medium sized price seats and expensive seats. You queued for all of them. You queued for buses to get in. It was quite usual to wait for three or four buses in King's Lane High Street. They'd come through and they'd be full up, or they'd limit the number of people on it. We were very patient. We were brought up to queue for things. During the war, you didn't have holidays because none of the beaches were open to the public. My father was in the army station at Cavisham and our annual holiday was to go to Cabisham for a week and stay with his landlady. And Dad would hire a boat on the Thames and we'd spend time around Cabisham. When he was demobbed from the army, we started going on holidays to the seaside. Uh, we'd go to Hastings or, or Clacton or Westcliff. And uh, you'd go by train because we didn't have cars. An army of, of landladies had digs. So you're going to stay with the landlady Later on we went to a holiday camp, there were no licensed bars. It's all good honest entertainment. 